Jones. Time now for Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons. One of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Country Club Murder Case. This program is presented for your entertainment by the makers of Anison, the remarkable tablets that bring such incredibly fast, effective relief from the pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. In all probability, you, like so many thousands of people, have been given an envelope containing Anison tablets by your own physician or dentist at some time or another. Then you already know how effective it is. But if you have not, try Anison the next time you want really fast relief from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You'll be delighted with the results. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Ask for Anison, spelled A-N-A-C-I-N, at any drug counter today. <laughs> Now for Mr. Keene and the Country Club murder case. Our scene opens at a fashionable country club in Westchester. A spring dance is in progress. And as the couples in evening clothes enjoy themselves in the main ballroom of the club, two young people emerge from the dance floor and pause momentarily on the terrace overlooking the ground. Arlene, this is the first chance I've had to see you alone in nearly a week. I've missed you, Alan. Oh, darling. Oh, not here. We'll be seen. I'll go around and get the car. We'll take a drive. All right, Alan. You wait for me here, Arlene. I'll be back in two minutes. What a beautiful spring evening. Oh, I didn't know you... What, what are you doing? Take your hands from, from my throat. No! Don't kill me! No! No! Oh, no! When I got back to the terrace, Mr. Keene, Arlene was dead. She'd been strangled. And that was only a few minutes after you left her, Mr. Rogers? Yes, Mr. Keene. Well, saints preserve us, but you mean to say that no one in the ballroom saw it happen? And that they were all that close? Yes, Mr. Rogers. I'm just as puzzled about that as my partner, Mike Clancy. Well, it's true that Arlene was near the dances, Mr. Keene, but I'd closed the terrace door when we left the ballroom. And it was all over so quickly... No one even knew what happened until I found Arlene's body. I suppose the police questioned everyone who attended that country club dance. Yes, Mr. Keene, but no one was held. The murder's a complete mystery. Hmm. Tell me a little bit more about yourself and your relationship with Arlene Graham. Well, there's very little to tell. I was very much in love with her and she with me, I believe. Were you going to marry? Arlene was already married, Mr. Keene. To whom, Mr. Rogers? Chester Graham. A drunkard. He treated her miserably. Arlene was wealthy, and she gave him almost half a million dollars to invest in the business. He gambled most of it away. He'd come home drunk, even beat her. Finally, she left him two months ago. She was suing for a divorce when she was murdered. Mr. Rogers, was this husband of hers, Chester Graham, at the country club dance uh, where the murder took place? No one saw him there, Mr. Clancy, but he could have sneaked in without being noticed. The police are looking for Chester now to question him. I thought with your help, Mr. Keene, he'd be rounded up a little faster. For my part, I'd you like to... You seem to feel that Chester Graham is the most important suspect in this case. Hmm? Who else would have murdered a girl like Arlene, Mr. Keene? 
She was gentle, kind, and loyal to her worthless husband. She wouldn't permit me to see her at all until she knew her marriage was ended. And she couldn't ever go back to Chester. Now, you say she had given her husband half a million dollars to invest? Yes. In my opinion, Chester only married her for her money. My relationship with her at first was in a business way. I advised her about her investments and securities. I see. Up to the time she married Chester Graham, she, she lived with a guardian, an uncle named Hubert Parker. He's heartbroken over Arlene's death and very bitter about it. Mr. Parker had advised Arlene not to marry Chester. Now he feels, as I do, that Chester may have had something to do with her murder. Who inherits Arlene Graham's money now that she's dead? I guess Chester, her husband, inherits the money, Mr. Keene. Which could have been another Let's reason... Let's not come to conclusions until we investigate this further, Mr. Rogers. And you'll accept the case, Mr. Keene? You'll try to find Arlene's murderer? Well, yes, of course. Thank you. The loss of Arlene was... was a great blow to me. I wish I could describe to you how wonderful she was... How forgiving. Forgiving? Do you imply that she forgave you for something, Mr. Rogers? Well, I, I wasn't thinking of myself exactly. All, although I did make one bad mistake that she covered for me. Oh, what was that? Oh, it was nothing important. I... I must insist on having every detail concerning this case, Mr. Rogers. No matter how unimportant it may seem to you. Well, it was just that I advised her badly about an investment once and she lost some money. But that was long ago, and it's all been forgotten. Mr. Rogers, does anyone know where this Graham fellow, her husband, might be hiding out? No, Mr. Clancy, but I suddenly remembered something a moment ago that may be of some help. What was it? On top of Chester Graham's other bad habits, he was deceitful. He was seeing another woman. When Arlene found out about that, it was the last straw. Who is this other woman? Eve Worthing. She's a well-known artist with a studio down in Greenwich Village. Something tells me that Miss Worthing may know where Chester Graham can be found. Then we'll make Miss Worthing's studio our first stop, Mike. Okay, boss. Mr. Keene, needless to say, I'll do anything to help you solve this case. I'm going to see that Arlene's murderer pays the full penalty for the crime if it's the last thing I do. You can rest assured that justice will be done eventually, Mr. Rogers. No matter who that murderer turns out to be... You have my address, Mr. Keene. I'll be waiting for news. You'll hear from me shortly. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Clancy. So long. Goodbye. He seems like a nice young fellow to me, Mr. Keene. Yes, Mike, but there are one, two things about his story that started me off on a different track. Meaning what, boss? Well, that bad investment he advised Arlene Graham to make. Alan Rogers didn't want to talk about it too much. Well, now that you mentioned it, I noticed that too, Mr. Keene. A murder case like this is always wise to keep an eye on everyone, Mike, including our client. Well, suppose we proceed to Eve Worthing's art studio and see if we can get any information on Chester Graham, who at the moment seems to be suspect number one. <laughs> Building superintendent downstairs said that Miss Worthen was in her studio apartment, Mr. Keene. It's odd she doesn't answer her doorbell, Mike. Try ringing again. Yes? Are you Miss Eve Worthing? Yes, I am. Well, my name is Keene. This is my partner, Mr. Clancy. Mr. Keene, the great investigator? I was wondering if I could talk to you for a few minutes. May we come in? Well... I can answer your questions out here in the hall. Do you happen to know where I can locate Chester Graham? Chester? What makes you think I know where he is? Well, we understand that you're a friend of his. I haven't seen him in two months. Did you know that his wife, Arlene Graham, was murdered last night? His wife? Murdered? Well, I... I haven't had a chance to read the papers yet, Mr. Keene. The story hasn't appeared yet. I don't know where Chester is. And what's more, I don't care. I see. Well, thank you for your information, Miss Worthing. Good day. Good day. Joan, she had guilt written all over her face, Mr. King. Yes, Eve Worthing knows where Chester Graham is, Mike. In my opinion, he's here in her apartment right now. She seemed to be very anxious to keep us out. And what'll we do, sir? Come over here to the end of the hall, Mike. 
This uh, seems to be the service entrance to the apartment. It may be open. Try the door very quietly. It's open, boss. I'll go back to the front door and ring the bell again. And when Miss Worthing comes to the door, I'll keep her busy while you get inside and look the place over and see if Chester Graham is there. All right, sir. Be careful now. Graham may be dangerous. I'll be ready for him, Mr. Keene. What is it now, Mr. Keene? Oh, there's just one more piece of information I thought you might be able to give me, Mr. Keene. Who's there? Who's in the kitchen? What are you... Just stay where you are, mister. Don't pull anything. Who are you? The name is Clancy. What's yours? None of your business. Let's see an identification, mister. Get out. Get out before I call the police. Why, sure, and I'll call them for you. What? Go on into the studio, Mr. Chester Graham. How did you know? Oh, just call it into wish. I tell you, Mr. Keene, that I don't know where Chester is. Maybe I do, boss. He's right here. Good work, Mike. Miss Worthing, I'm afraid I'll have to insist on coming in, whether you like it or not. Who are you? Name is Keene. And you? Well, looks as though this fella just doesn't want to talk, boss. It's no use, Chester. They know who you are. You could have kept them out, Eve. You never even tried. Chester! Mr. Graham, I presume you know your wife has been murdered. I won't answer your questions, Mr. Keene. I demand to see my lawyer. That demand will be granted. Just as soon as we turn you over to the police. Chester didn't kill Arlene, Mr. Keene. He's been with me all the time. How long has he been hiding here in your apartment, Miss Worthing? He's been here Don't ever since... Don't lie to him, Eve. It'll only get you into trouble. I've only been here for an hour, Mr. Keene. Where were you at 11 last night when your wife was murdered? I, I don't remember. Sure, and that's not even a good try at an alibi, mister. I tell you, I don't remember. I, I've been drinking and I, I must have fallen asleep somewhere in the park. I... I'll answer that. Is uh, Miss Eve Worthing here? Yes, she is. But Arlene's uncle, Hubert Parker. Hubert, I... Chester Graham, I've been aching for the chance to get my hands on you. You won't get away with this, you murderer, you heartless, drunken killer. Mr. Keene, he's got a I'll gun. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Mike. Mike. Give me that gun, oh, mister. Oh. Drop it. Stop. All right. All right. Let go of my arm. Mr. Park, that shot hadn't been reflected by Mike Clancy. You yourself would be facing a murder charge right I, now. I, I couldn't help it. I, I just couldn't help it. Who are you? My name is Keene. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator? Then you've come here to arrest Chester Graham for murdering my niece, Arlene. I've come here to turn Chester Graham over to the police for questioning, Mr. Parker. As for arresting your niece's killer, I intend to do that too. As soon as I find out, without the shadow of a doubt, who's responsible for her death. Just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the Country Club murder case. Meanwhile, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath. Yes, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Colonos toothpaste with dental floss action. Your dentist will tell you, brush your teeth after meals to stop decay. Clean those cracks and crevices deep between your teeth to guard against unpleasing breath. Now, Colonos gives you dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to help dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath. What's more, foamy, refreshing colonos brightens teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Helps stop tooth decay. Get colonos toothpaste with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the Country Club murder case. Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the murder of lovely, wealthy young Arlene Graham, who was strangled during a dance at a fashionable country club. Among the suspects is Chester Graham, Arlene's estranged husband, whom Mr. Keene and Mike captured in the apartment of Eve Worthing, a friend of Graham's. Now Mr. Keene and Mike have returned to their office, and a young man enters. It is Alan Rogers, who was in love with a murdered girl. 
boss. Here's young Alan Rogers again. Mr. King, you found Arlene's husband, Chester Graham? Yes, he's being questioned by the police about the murder of his wife right now, Mr. Rogers. I hope he gets the full penalty. It hasn't been proven yet that he's the murderer. However, the police may want to question you again. Why, I've already talked to them. I told them the truth as I told it to you. I was in love with Arlene, and I handled a business affairs. Yes, I... Business affairs we are most interested in, Mr. Rogers. That's why I asked you to come back here to my office. Well, what is it you want to know, Mr. Keene? Well, you told me Arlene Graham was quite wealthy. My partner, Mike Clancy, and I would like to look over her business records. We were wondering if you had them, Mr. Rogers. Why, well, no, Mr. Clancy. I, I only advised Arlene in regard to certain investments. I, I wasn't her accountant. Who was her accountant? She didn't have any, Mr. Keene. At least, not since I knew her. Arlene kept her own records. And how long had you known her, all told? Only a year. I met Arlene just after she married Chester Graham. Did you know her uncle, Hubert Parker? Only slightly. What uh, kind of a man is he? He's a very pleasant old gentleman, well-liked. I'm sure he didn't act like that a couple of hours ago. What do you mean, Mr. Clancy? He attempted to kill Chester Graham in Eve Worthing's apartment. Really, Mr. Keene? Well, I don't blame him. Mr. Parker loved his niece, Arlene. I might have lost my head, too, if I'd come face to face with Graham. Fortunately, Mr. Parker realized what he had done. Chester Graham refused to press charges against him. He'd be a fine one to press charges against anybody, Mr. Keene. Mr. Rogers, you still feel pretty certain that Chester Graham killed his wife? Yes, I do. Well, he wasn't seen at the country club where she was strangled. But he was a member of the club. He could have walked in. Was that dance restricted to members only, Mr. Rogers? Yes, we have a closed membership now, Mr. Keene. Only 70 people. It's a young people's club. I'd say that no member was over 40 years of age. Well, that's a good point to remember, Mike. Who are you uh, calling, Mr. Keene? Hubert Parker. We're going to search Arlene's home for possible clues. She hasn't lived with her uncle since her marriage. I know. We've gotten the key to her home from her husband, Chester Graham. But there was something I wanted to ask, Mr. Um... Hello? Oh, Mr. Parker? Yes. This is Mr. Keene. Oh, uh, I uh, I meant to thank you, Mr. Keene, for the way you handled my uh, stupid outburst with Chester Graham. You saved me a lot of grief uh, by interfering. Well, Mr. Parker, I called to ask you something about your niece, Arlene. Uh, well? Did she ever have a professional accountant to handle her business affairs? No, not that I know of, Mr. Keene. Who handled her finances while she was your ward? I did, with her permission, of course. But there was never any need for an accountant. All Arlene's investments had been made by her father before his death. And uh, she merely received income on her stocks and bonds. I see. Well, perhaps I'll learn a little more when I go over her business affairs. And thank you for your help, Mr. Parker. Uh, what about Arlene's husband, Chester Graham? I trust the police will keep him under arrest. Well, they probably will until the case is closed. Goodbye, Mr. Parker. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Keene. All right, Mike. Let's get started. Right, boss. Oh, Mr. Rogers. Yes, Mr. Keene. Did you tell the police about the bad investments you made for Arlene Graham and the money she lost through them? No. And I see now that was a mistake. Do you want me to report them? Yes. Meanwhile, I have a feeling that a clue to Arlene Graham's murder may be found inside her own home. And if it's there, Mike and I intend to find it. Hey, this is a beautiful house, Mr. Keene. Arlene Graham was sure wealthy. Yes, she was, Mike. Uh, this room here must be the study. Let's go in. There must be a light switch in this room, Mr. Keene. Just a moment, Mike. Don't put the lights on yet. Boss, someone's in the next room. Yes, this house is supposed to be empty. Let's find out who else is interested in Arlene Graham's private affairs. <gasps> Mr. Keene. What are you doing here, Miss Worthing? Nothing. I mean... Eve uh, Worthen came in through that open window, boss. Yes, Mike. A rather unusual way to make a casual visit. I refuse to discuss it, Mr. Yeah, King. Not so fast, lady. How dare you stand in my way? I suggest we dispense with the act, Miss Worthing. I can turn you into the police for housebreaking. 
if for no other reason. Very well, do it. Perhaps I will. After I find out why you've come here to Arlene Graham's home, I'll take that knitting bag you're holding, if you please. No. Turn it over, lady, or I'll have to take it away from you. Oh, I've ruined everything. I should never have started this. The knitting bag, please. Here. Mr. Keene, it's stuffed with checks. Cancel checks, Mike. Let's look them over. Hmm. Several of these checks appear to be forgeries. The signatures don't match Arlene Graham's signatures on the others. Chester didn't kill Arlene, Mr. Keene. He... He may have forged her name on those checks, but he needed money desperately. Is that why you came for these checks, Miss Worthing? To protect Arlene's husband, Chester Graham? Yes. How did you know about these forgeries? Uh, Arlene told me. She did? Yes. Just before she was murdered, she phoned me and asked me where Chester was. She hadn't seen him since their separation. Then she said her name had been forged on several checks. For over $50,000. And she suspected that her husband was guilty? Yes. Someone's at the front door, Mike. See who it is. Okay, sir. Well, Miss Worthing, this not only puts Chester Graham in a more serious position, but you as well. What do you mean, Mr. Keene? You admit you're in love with Chester Graham, don't you? I don't admit anything. You must be in love with him. Or you wouldn't have tried to hide him or get hold of these forged checks to defend him. Well, suppose I did love Chester... And suppose after he left his wife, Arlene, he wanted to return to her again. Suppose you became so insanely jealous of Arlene Graham that you... Uh... That I murdered her? Is that what you were going to say, Mr. Keene? Well, it's not true, and you can't prove it is. Mr. Keene, Mr. Parker's here. Well, bring him in, Mike. Hubert Parker? Arlene's uncle? Yes. Why, I... I believe I've met Miss Worthing before, Mr. Keene. When, Mr. Parker? You mean before you came to her studio a few hours ago? Yes, before my niece, Arlene, was married. This woman was Arlene's social secretary. Oh, that's very interesting. You're all against me. Well, do what you like. I don't care. Mike, take Miss Worthing into the next room. She's becoming hysterical. Oh, you better come along. Yes. I won't let you send Chester to the electric chair. We're both innocent. Both of us. Take it easy. Take it easy. I came here to speak to you, Mr. Keene. After you phoned, I was suddenly reminded of something that may be important. Oh, what was it, Mr. Parker? The last time I spoke to my niece, Arlene, uh, just before she was murdered, she said something about missing money. Oh? She referred to her husband, Chester Graham, and told me that she'd give me more details after she'd uh, thoroughly checked through her bank statements. Did she mention anything about forged checks, Mr. Parker? No, not that I remember. You see, I've just discovered these cancelled checks of Arlene's. And several of them appear to be forgeries. Then that was it, Mr. Keene. Her husband, Chester Graham, had forged her name in order to get money. Now, there's no doubt about it. Chester Graham murdered my niece to cover up his forgeries. Mm, there's only one clue that's missing, Mr. Parker. No one saw Chester Graham in the vicinity of the country club on the night of the murder. I saw him there. You? I dropped in for a few moments during the dance and uh, saw him in the foyer. Were you a member of that country club, Mr. Parker? Why, uh, yes, Mr. Keene. Miss Worthen is lying down on the couch inside, boss. Crying like a baby. In spite of everything, I'm beginning to feel kind of sorry for her. Well, she has nothing to worry about, Mike. I know now who murdered Arlene Graham. You know who murdered my niece? Who, Mr. Keene? First, let me ask you one more question, Mr. Parker. Is Chester Graham left-handed? Why, I... I don't think so. Neither is Eve Worthing. But you are. Huh? I noticed that when you fired a gun at Chester Graham. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Because it was a left-handed person who forged those checks. The handwriting of a left-handed person often slants in a different way from a right-handed person. Mr. Keene... Are you accusing me of murdering my niece? I am, Mr. Parker. What rot? You must be crazy. I have several other pieces of evidence. One thing you said, you were a member of that country club. As they have no members over 40, and you're obviously older than that, I knew you were lying. Which makes me believe that you lied about several other things as well. For instance? You were at the country club, all right. But you didn't see Chester Graham there. You sneaked in unnoticed in some way and strangled your niece. Then, to base a case against Chester, 
You tried to testify you saw him at the club. That still isn't final proof against me, Keen. You knew your niece had discovered the forgers of her checks and that she'd try to turn you into the police. That's why you decided to murder her. No, no, that's a lie. And her recent disagreement with her husband gave you a perfect chance. Chester Graham's bad habits are well known. And you thought he'd be blamed for the murder and forgeries, too. You're crazy, Keene. You don't know what you're talking about. In my opinion, Mr. Parker, you made a mistake and didn't know it. A mistake? Actually, Arlene believed her husband did forge those checks. But you thought she suspected you. Arlene could have discovered the truth... If she learned what I did in examining these cancelled checks. And what was that? Two of these checks are dated back two years, long before Arlene was married. She was living with you at that time, Mr. Parker. And you were helping yourself to her fortune by forging her name. If you're looking at it, Mr. Keene, he's turning pale. Yes, Mike. Parker, it won't take me long to prove these forgeries are yours. Go through his wallet, Mike. If he has a driver's license with his own signature on it, we'll compare it with one of these forged checks. That... that won't be necessary, Mr. Keene. I'm afraid you win. I wish I could feel sorry for you, Parker. You're not a young man anymore, and this will finish you. But I have no sympathy with murder. A man who takes a human life for his own selfish profit deserves to feel the full impact of the law. And that's just what you're heading for now. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the country club murder case. Next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Klee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the case of the woman who married a murderer. Ever suffer heartburn or upset stomach from acid indigestion? Safe new Bicidol mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling. Give longer-lasting relief than baking soda. Yes, hours of relief. Bicidol mints not only neutralize, but actually carry away excess stomach acids. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep all night long when acid indigestion strikes. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief anywhere, anytime. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.